All right, guys. So as I was saying, you now, um, so Miss Darty, um, your your um diagonal matrix. You need to check that again because it's not supposed to have non-zero elements in all the all the positions. Is that clear, Miss Darty? Miss Darty, are you hearing me? Can you respond? All right, so I'm not sure whether or not Miss Darty is hearing me. All right, so guys, so we are back from the interruption with Zoom. So let us get what uh, what did you get, Miss Cabrera? Sorry, what, sir? For your for the diagonal matrix. But 40, negative 14, negative 8, negative 24, then negative 14. That something is wrong there too as well. So you need to check yours too as well, Ms. Cabrera. Ms. Green, what did you get? Sir, I got negative 2, 0, 0, and negative 14. Something is wrong there too as well. Ms. Ms. Sam, what did you get for your answer? So I got two, zero, and zero, and two. You got two, you got two, zero. Zero, and two. Okay. All right, that sounds more like it, but let us see what happened with the others, because maybe throughout the multiplication process, they may have um, done something incorrect. Now it is easy to, to somewhat miscalculate when you're working with negative guys. So be sure that you take care in your calculation with the negative numbers, all right? So this is what your diagonal L, um, matrix should be, but let us check the multiplication aspect of it. So we're gonna have rows by columns, so negative one times six, will give you a negative six and negative four times negative two will give you a positive. Negative four times positive two will give you, sorry, negative four times negative two will give you a positive eight. And so positive eight plus six, I should say positive eight plus negative six will give you positive two, all right? so. So that's how we'll get this first two here. All right, so if we use the first row times the second column, we would have negative one times four, negative four. Then we have negative four times negative one, that give you positive four. So you'd add negative four plus positive four, give you zero for this one. Now to get the bottom row, we use the second row of the first matrix. So we have two times six, if we do two times six, we get what? Two sixes, 12. And if we do six times negative two, we get negative 12. So positive 12 plus negative 12 gives you zero, which is this element here. And then now we will we'll do now the second column with the second row. So two times four give you eight and six times negative one, give you negative six. So positive eight plus negative six will give you positive two, all right? So is that clear to everyone? Did everyone get the... <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Cabrera. Please you subtract them instead of adding them. Oh, see where you made your mistake. All right, good. All right, so... um. And everyone got the adjoint matrix correct. Raise your hand if you got the adjoint matrix correct, guys. Miss Green, Miss Darity, did you get the adjoint matrix correct? Because if you don't get the adjoint matrix correct, you will. Um, no, sorry, I'm. A Redoing it over again. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to move. Um, so I hope you have the information. I'm going to move to the next slide. All right, guys. All right, so now having learned how to find a diagonal matrix using the adjoint method, what we're going to do, we're going to apply the adjoint matrix method to solve in solving simultaneous equation. So how do we do this? Now, first, we have two methods of matrix methods. We have two matrix, matrix methods, our matrices method, when we are solving simultaneous equations. So the first method is by adjoint matrix, and the second method is by inverse. So we are now going to look at the first method, which is number one. So by adjoint matrix. Now, when, when, when you have learned the two different methods, you can compare the two methods and see which one of them works better for you. And you can use that one. Unless they specify what method to use, you can use any of these methods. All right, so we're first going to look at solving simultaneous equation by the adjoint matrix. Now, given the simultaneous equation as below, now the first step that we want to do when solving a simultaneous equation by matrix method, you need to first write your, um, write your, write your equations in matrix form, right? Now, how do we do that? Now, on the left-hand side of the equation, we put all the coefficients of x and y in one matrix. And then the, the x and y by itself, we put that as another matrix. And on the right-hand side, we put the results as another matrix. And so it will look like this for step one. So step one, we write the equation in matrix form. And this is what we get when we write it in matrix form. Now, if you are, if you are not quite sure how we get this, we can go back to what we have over here. And what we did, we look for the coefficients of X and Y. So here we have two, we have negative three, we have positive four, now, x by itself here would have one as a coefficient. So the first thing you do, you put all of these numbers in front of the x and y into matrix form. So you write two, one, negative three, and then four. So don't overlook the signs, guy. All right, so after you write the coefficients, this is known as the matrix of coefficient, right? Give me a second, guys. All right, so having done this, this becomes the matrix of coefficient, and we generally label this matrix as A. All right, now the X and Y, which would be the unknown, we put it in another matrix, X at the top and Y below, right? So this would be the the, the unknown, the matrix of unknown here, which is oftentimes referred to as, sorry, not, not K, but X. So it's a matrix of the unknown that is referred to as a matrix X. And then now, here where we have these results, 
it put them in one matrix over here. And these would be referred to as the matrix K. All right, guys, so that's how we write our simultaneous equations in matrix form. Is that clear to everyone? Raise your hand if you understand how to write a simultaneous equation in the matrix form. All right, good. All right, so with, with that said, that's the first step when you're going to solve um, simultaneous equation by matrix, you have to first write it in matrix form. All right, so this is what we would get. So that's what you should get for the first step. Now, the next step is you're going to pre-multiply both sides by adjoint matrix. Now the adjoint matrix would be the adjoint matrix of A. You're going to pre-multiply both sides of the equation by the adjoint matrix. So what would be the adjoint matrix of A here, students? Can anybody tell me? Yes, sir. All we right. have... You ready, sir? Yeah, ma'am, go ahead. All right, so four and two diagonally, and then we'd have minus one and positive three. All right, so you interchange four with two, and yes, sir. the sign of one and negative three. So you get negative one and positive three. So you're going to use that as the adjoint. So you're going to multiply both sides of your equation by the adjoint. So this is what it would look like when you multiply both sides of the equation by the adjoint. Is that clear, guys? So this is our adjoint that we get from A. And to get this, we know that we just interchange the two and four and change the sign of the, the one and the negative three. So this is what we got. So it means that we are going to multiply both sides by the adjoint matrix. Now, remember now, when you're doing matrix multiplication, you will have to start with the first matrix and the second matrix. You multiply out those to get a matrix. And of course, you are multiplying the adjoint of A by A. So you're expecting to get a diagonal matrix when you multiply these two. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Go right. over again, please. I'm saying that for these two, you multiply these first and ignore the matrix X. So you multiply these to get a single matrix. And then you're going to times it by the X again. Is that clear? But when you multiply these two, you are multiplying edge A times A. And I'm saying to you, this will give you a diagonal matrix when you multiply these two, because that's what we've been doing in the previous um, activity. So you multiply this by A by H A, we should get a diagonal matrix. All right, if we do that, we would say four, four times two, give you eight, and three times one, give you three, Eight plus three give you eleven. So the diagonal matrix would would be which would be eleven here, eleven here, zero, zero. Then now you would have x matrix x and y here. That's what you would have. Now this this side now you multiply out by the adjoint just the same. So you have four times seven, four sevens, 28, three twos, negative six, 28 up minus six will give you 22. And then negative one times seven, negative seven, two times negative two, that's negative seven plus negative four, give you negative 11. That's what you would have on this side. Now, when you're multiplying now the unknown matrix by the diagonal matrix, 
This is pretty easy. All you need to do is to put the diagonal element beside the unknown. So in this case, at the top, you would have 11x. And then down below, you would now have 11y. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward when you're multiplying by a diagonal matrix. And then now you bring back this down here to be 22 and negative 11. All right, now when you're solving, you use the property of equality of matrices. So if two matrices are equal, their corresponding elements are equal. So therefore, we would have 11x would be equal to 22. And then now you can solve by solve for x. So you divide both sides by 11. Cancel down. So you would have x is equal to 11 to 22 goes 2. So x equal to 2. And likewise, you do the same for y. So you would say, um, therefore, 11y would be equal to neg negative 11. Divide both sides by 11 and then cancel. So y would now be equal to negative 1. Hence, x equal 2. And so hence, hence, x equal 2. And this is this is a conclus conclusive statement, guys. You must generally try to write your conclusive answer. Hence, x equal to and y equal negative one. All right? Is that clear to everybody? Everybody see what was done just now? Sir, can you, sir, can you go back to how you get the twenty two and the minus level, please? Yes. So I will do that for you. All right, so basically to get the 22 and the minus 11, we are multiplying K by the adjoint A, right? So we are following the same rules of multiplication, row by column. So take the first row, the first column, four sevens, 28. Three times negative two, negative six. 28 minus six, you get 22. Then we use the second row. Negative one times seven, negative seven. Two times negative two, negative four. Negative seven plus negative two, sorry. Negative seven plus negative four give you negative 11. You follow? You may want to do the steps in your calculation. Just, just to prevent making mistakes. Um, you, you, you can only, you can only probably skip steps when you become very proficient at doing it. So you have to practice in order to be able to just do it like that. All right, guys. Any question, Miss Wilson? Are you clear on how we we get those values? Yes, sir. I saw it for you, dude. So I'm going to try it for myself okay. afterwards. So now, just going through the animation again. So here, this would reduce to 11. That would be a diagonal matrix 11, 0, 0, 11 times x, y. Now you multiply the right hand side, you get 22 minus 11. Then you multiply your diagonal matrix by the unknown x. So you get 11x and 11y equal to 22 equal to minus 11. Equating corresponding elements, we get 11x equal to 22 implies that x is equal to 22 by 11, give it 2. And 11y equal to 
negative 11 implies that y equals to negative 11 divided by negative 11. This should be, sorry, this should be 11 here. I guess there's a type of problem here. All right, so this would be negative 11 divided by 11. So um, I tried to correct that. All right, guys, any question? Any question, raise your hand if you're clear on what the steps are. All right, so what we're going to do now is, is we are going to, um, we're going to look at another question. And this one will see if you can walk through it. You can go through it on your own. All right, so before we jump to the method of inverse, let me stop sharing this. And I'm going to give you some um, questions to try using the adjoint method. All right, so here we have some, some questions. I want you to do question one, questions one, two, and three using the adjoint matrix method. Whenever you're finished with question one, you raise your hand and then now we check the answer and then now you go to question two, et cetera. Is that clear guys? All right, so go ahead and try to do question one. Try to solve it, solve for X and Y using the adjoint matrix method. All right, guys, go ahead and start. Raise your hand when you're finished and then share your answer.
How far you reach with question one now? Anybody? All right, guys, so I'm just going to walk through the steps and then now you tell me what you have. So um, for the first part, you want to find the, the matrix of coefficients. So you find the coefficient of X and Y. So you would have three and one, then two and one. All right, so that would be your matrix A. Then you put your X and Y into that matrix that we call X. And then now we equate that to the matrix of the results that we call K. So we would have seven and three. And that would be K. Let me see the hands of those who at least got that correct so far. All right, good. All right, so the next step now is to find our adjoint matrix. And so we are going to pre multiply by our adjoint matrix. So this is. Add A. All right, so our adjoint matrix A, we interchange the diagonal elements. So put one there, and then we put three down the bottom right of the diagonal. Then now we change the signs of one to negative one and two to negative two. And then we write by the matrix A, three, one, two, one. So this is three. All right, and then this is a matrix A. Then we write back our X and Y matrix. And this is a matrix X. And then now we write our adjoint matrix on this side as well. So we're just simply rewriting our edge there on the right hand side. So we have seven, three, okay. Let me see the hands of those who at least got that so far. All right, good. So now we, we multiply A at A times A here. So that is one times three, give it three. Minus two times one give you um, negative two. So three minus two will give you one. That means your diagonal matrix is going to be one, one, zero. Times X and Y. And then now on the right hand side, we multiply one times seven, seven, negative two times three, negative six. So one times seven, seven, negative two times three, negative six. So seven minus six give you one. So you have, now you use the bottom row, negative one times seven, give you negative seven, three times three, give you nine. So negative seven plus nine 
will give you two. All right, so now you group these together. So you would have one X, which is just X, and then one Y, which is just Y, and that is equal to one and two. Then you equate the corresponding element. So therefore, X is equal to one, and y is equal to, to two. Let me see the answer those who got that. All right. All right, so that's the answer for our question one. So go ahead now and do question two and question three. And then now after you finish those, then we will move on to look at the inverse method. All right, guys, when you finish with question two, raise your hand so that we can quickly check the answer. 